Hey, everybody. David Costello here, CEO and founder of Jetpack Workflow and host of Growing It From Podcast. Today's guest is Austin Nestle. He is the author of From Six to Seven Figures and founder of 2X. Now, full disclosure, I did purchase a copy of his book, and I thought that the content, the materials, the frameworks, the tips, the tactics he had put in his book was so relevant for so many accounting firm owners that are trying to think about how to make that leap, that mindset leap, the revenue leap, the structure leap, the systems leap from going six to seven figures. So we're going to talk about things around your team. We're going to talk about things around systems. We're going to talk about things around your time, the owner's time, the leader's time, and how to elevate it to a point where you could free up the firm to get to seven figures. But all that to say, so excited to have Austin on the show today. Austin, welcome. David, appreciate it. Love what you're doing, helping accounting firms, and excited to see uh, uh, the value that we can bring here today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the first thing, the big conundrum that, you know, we were talking about pre-interview is how firm owners spend their time and they're doing all kinds of different activities. They're kind of like the superhero firefighters. Mm. They're trying to put everything out. They're trying to be the hero. They're trying to do strategic, not strategic admin client. They're doing everything, right? Yeah. How do you start to get control of your time so the firm could start to breathe again? You could start to grow again. Yeah, this is one of the biggest constraints um, is most people are just pulled in too many different directions and they know that there's different things that they should be spending their time on to take their firm, to take their uh, client list to, to the next level, but they're just not able to because uh, again, they're just being spread too thin. So first and foremost, what we've got to do is look at where your time is actually going. And when we break it down, David, most of the time that we see it's related to uh, client management or it's related to admin stuff or there's very little of your time actually going towards growth or going towards building and optimizing your team and really supporting them. Um, and so many people are the approver, they're the main client manager, they're the main salesperson, they're the main marketer for their company, and you just can't wear all those hats. So we've got to take a step back and really define what your role actually should be and then build the business strategically because most people have a couple of people on their team that can take so much off their plate, but we just have to set them up to succeed in the proper way. So we've got to define what the owner's role, uh, the lead accountant's role it is primarily to drive the business forward. And then from there, build the team around them. But we've got to look at first and foremost, how can we free up time? And we do that again through team, through delegation and through the power of systems. Awesome. And so if I'm an owner right now and you, and you say, what is the role of the owner? What would you say on this journey from six to seven figures should be the primary role? You listed a bunch of functions, but what should they be doing? Um, one of the first things is uh, setting the vision for the company. Where do you want to go? Why are you in business? Who do you want to serve? Uh, what is that overall strategic vision? That's number one. Number two is usually you're the head of growth and you've got to be thinking, hey, how are we driving growth? And again, most people are just too busy that they're not spending their time on that. You probably are got to take the lead there. And sure, you may have somebody helping you with marketing and whatnot, but at the end of the day, as the owner, growth is on you. Uh, next is building and optimizing a world-class team. A lot of people are just too busy to really hire well, so they just hire somebody based on their resume or whatever, bring them on and they do okay and help a little bit, but they never quite set them up to succeed in the proper way so that they can't uh, actually ever have the time to go and focus on growth. So if you take the onus to build and optimize an amazing team, that alone is one of the highest leverage things that you can do because eventually with the proper systems, um, uh, uh, you can have a company that's very efficient and effective that you don't have to be doing much of anything. You could spend it on the beach if you want to. A lot of people uh, will spend it to drive even more growth and get to that seven figures and beyond. We've had several accounting firms that we worked with make that leap as well. Yeah, that's awesome. And you mentioned that early on, the firm owner, it sounds like you don't really know how you're spending your time. Do you yeah. recommend doing a literal like time audit, like writing down for a week everything that you're doing and categorizing it or any other kind of tactic like that? Absolutely. We've got something that we call the XDS process where we want you to uh, look at every single uh, minute of, of your past, let's call it week, uh, of exactly where your time is going. And don't be generic with this. Don't say it's going towards client management. Go into the specific types of clients and the specific uh, uh, tranches of, of where your time is going. Um, because once you really start to see this, tangibly right in front of you. You can use a spreadsheet. You could write it out on paper. We usually like to write it out on paper because it makes it very tangible. Now we can like see, oh my gosh, I, I thought I was trying to drive this company forward, but I'm actually just spending my time in the business. Well, we've got to change that, right? So when you look at it, most of the time, 
80%, maybe even 90% of your time isn't going towards those highest leverage activities. It's not going towards the best growth activities. It's not going towards really optimizing your team. Uh, it's not going towards strategy or systems or things that, again, you may not feel right in the moment, but you are going to feel 60 days from now, 90 days from now. And the ones that are able to take away um, their focus from the day-to-day, minute-to-minute reactivity and can focus on kind of that medium term of a couple months from now, those are the ones that are really going to thrive and really build a healthy organization. So definitely uh, detail out exactly where your time is going. And then for each and every one of those tasks in detail, we're going to put an X, D, or S beside most of them. And X is stuff that you can cut out. And again, a lot of people think everything that they're doing is uh, really important. Most of the time, it's not, right? There's a lot of things that you may be spending your time on that we frankly just don't need to do. So we put an X beside that. D is the stuff that we can delegate. And when you really look at it, with the proper system in place, you can delegate a lot of things. So we want to delegate as much as we can to your team. Uh, and S is systemized. If there's, you know, everything that you do in your business is a system, whether it's hiring, whether it's sales, whether it's you know, social media, whether it's uh, responding to a client, whatever, uh, everything is a system. So slowly, as you're already doing all the work, if we can have some intentionality behind it and build some systems, now you're just going to be able to get a lot more done, a lot more efficiently, and your team's going to be a lot more effective all those things lead to more time, right? And more time for the, your team, more time for yourself. And that's going to be able to allow you to drive your business forward. So at the end of the day, as you started, David, it's, it so often comes back to your time. Got it. And you mentioned XDS, first one's cut, delegate, and then S for systems. What are some things or what examples have you seen up in your client base that you, you just tell your clients, hey, you just you should just cut this. Like nobody yeah. should be doing this, right? Like what's an example of that? And then we'll, we'll dig a little bit into the team and delegation and, and how to really build that out because I think that's a critical component for these firms. But what, what's something you see that's just like the cut list or the most yeah. three common things people cut? Three common things. Uh, number one is most people have too many offerings or too many tiers. So we really go deep into see, hey, who should you be working with? Who's the ideal target audience, the ITA? Uh, and really getting clear on that. Because once we understand that, then we can say, hey, this product is a good fit or it's not, or this level is a good fit or it's not. And if we can cut out uh, some of that and focus on your real money makers, your real needle movers, uh, that's going to allow us to just have much better traction. So that's one of the first things. So if we do that, oftentimes, oftentimes people are losing money on some offerings or they uh, or we cut out the bottom, you know, 25%, the ones that are a pain in the butt to work with, and they don't pay very much anyways. And, and guess what? The profitability instantly goes up, the time instantly goes up, and now we have more focus of what the business actually is, so we get better traction. So offerings is really uh, important first, and we do that in conjunction with once we understand uh, the ideal target audience. So that's one. Another is uh, things from a marketing standpoint that just aren't working. Like a lot of people think that they just have to do blogging or they think that they have to do social media or whatnot. And at the end of the day, it's like, are those working? Are those driving clients for you? Yes or no? If they're not, well, hey, let's, 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 let's put that on pause and see how the business does the next 30 days. And if we're desperately missing it, we'll come back to it. And as soon as we cut it, they're like, oh my gosh, I've got this extra time and capacity. And my business is growing because we've made a couple other changes. So they, they don't need it. So that's another one. Um, and then the other is uh, every admin task that you're doing needs to be delegated, needs to be offloaded. Uh, and much of that can be cut, but there's just so much busyness and reactivity um, that if you can put in the proper systems and make sure that your time's going towards the right stuff, uh, again, there's, there's just less moving pieces, um, so which, which makes it your life so much easier. Yeah. And I love that point when you talk about cutting and, you know, if I, and I love your point about, you know, marketing activities, sales activities, I think in a world in which, you know, you're really unsure most in most cases for a lot of, at least a lot of the firms we've seen what's driving growth that you just get obsessed, obsessed. with activity and not what that activity is doing yep. for your firm. And I have nothing against like networking groups or anything like that, but I could see that being a common culprit of, well, I feel like I should go because who knows. And I think you kind of get caught in this like trap of being like, well, maybe I'll find a client. I mean, I've heard people get clients from these things. It's like, yeah. look, if you've been going there for six, seven, eight months and it's not working out, you can cut it. And if you really do miss it, you're like, well, it actually re-energizes me because I connect with other business owners, even if I don't grow. You can always add it back. Like that's to your yeah. point, cut it, 
And if you miss it, like these are, this is not life or death decisions. You can always go back to it. Or if you enjoy it so much, like blogging, then do it well and figure out how to make that a key driver of your business because we certainly have enough interviews of people where content marketing was a key driver. So I, yeah. I, I really appreciate your points there. When it comes to building out your team, I think for, for a number of people listening, they probably already have a team in place, but they mm -hmm. did it in maybe the typical firm owner fashion. So let me outline this for you. And it's probably, maybe it sounds familiar for a lot of people you work with. I'm an owner of a firm. I'm incredibly busy, right? Mm -hmm. I am, I am going after clients and I am sales person, the marketer, main client contact, the approver, but I have too much work. So I do a quick Google search, try to put something together, hire somebody. I have that person just follow me around virtually or offline for a week or two weeks. I make sure they're doing good work. And then I just let them go because, mm -hmm. Hey, I want to trust people. So I just let them go and we check in uh, as needed. Maybe we have a Monday meeting check in. And that's the extent of kind of the team. Cause I think a lot of us are put in a situation where we're first time managers, we're first time mm -hmm. owners, and we don't have this structure in place. So what are some disciplines, cadences, frameworks that you think every manager should be applying to really maximize their existing team? Yeah. Uh, and if we talk about pre-interview, I think the trap is we'll let we keep hiring to grow. Yeah. But I think what I want to focus on is like with the current team we have, how do we know we're doing a great job with them? Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, definitely in the future, the answer is to hire well, uh, but that's a whole different conversation. And there's different you know, hoops that you want people to jump through. So we'll, we'll talk about that uh, maybe in another interview. But right now, it's how do you get more out of your team? And mm -hmm. the answer is, first and foremost, they need clarity. All right. As the owner, we think people that can see what we see. We think that they know what we know. We think that they're going to work as hard as we want to work and, and that they're uh, as inspired as we are. Uh, but they aren't and they can't see what we can see. They don't know it. So we have to tell them. We have to be very explicit for this. Uh, so what we start with with the team is something that's called a job scorecard. This job scorecard is the center of every single role that we have. It's the first thing that we do before we go and hire uh, somebody. It's the first thing that we do when we come in and start working with the team. And a job scorecard lays out what success is. What is somebody's role? What are their responsibilities? How are they being measured? Uh, again, defining what success is for them. As soon as they see this, they're like, oh, I get it. I can do this, this, and this. And they can start to take those things off. But oftentimes they don't know exactly what's expected of them or they're handling this thing and that thing and then pulled over here and over there and they're not really clear. Um, so it's really game changing for them. It's game changing for you to give them that clarity. This is also the center of your feedback to them of how they're doing. Where are they doing well? Where are there gaps and opportunities? How are they doing you know, with the different basic things such as your team culture and whatnot? And we've got a free template uh, that we can give everybody, David, so we'll give that away at the end. Um, this is a spreadsheet that we use and I'll give you the exact one that we use. And there's several tabs on this. So what you do is define this. So now they have clarity on exactly what success is. You have clarity on what success is for them. Uh, and you've got something that will be the center of your one-on-one -on -one monthly uh, performance reviews. So now you've got a great way to have a, a conversation to say, hey, here's what I'm seeing. Here's what you're doing well. Here's where the gaps and opportunities are. And you just get better. But the clarity is priceless. The feedback loops that they have are priceless. And most people don't have those two simple things. So I would highly encourage you for every single person on your team, create that job scorecard, use it as uh, the conversation starter every single month. And that alone is going to help you be much more efficient. Now, the third thing I would say is get into the proper meeting uh, 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 kind of cadence. Uh, if you don't have a daily huddle with your team, I would highly suggest that you do that. This is a short seven to 15 minute meeting that you go through uh, a lot of the challenges and, and uh, what people are focused on for that particular day. We've got a whole process for that. Um, but if you have just a daily check-in and you train everybody to bring their questions and challenges as much as possible to that daily check-in, and that way they're not pulling you away at two o'clock and then somebody else at three 30 and then somebody else and whatever. It's, there's so much reactivity in most small businesses that the efficiency is, is horrible. So we've got to change that. And, people to bring their questions and challenges there as often as possible uh, that allows everybody in the company to be less reactive so that supports them and gets them more productive gets uh, you way more productive and your time is so valuable if you do those couple things again we're talking about doubling or tripling uh, with those couple uh, actions uh, the productivity of your team so you don't have to grow a huge team all right we reach a ton of lives all throughout the world and we've got zero full-time people on our marketing team so with the proper strategy, with the proper infrastructure and with the proper systems, you can do a lot in any department, really. And I want you to 
uh, really think about the, um, uh, not having to build your team in overhead uh, as you grow uh, to the next level. Yeah, and, uh, and it's an interesting conceptual question is like, what would I have to do with my firm to grow without adding headcount? Yep. yep. Right. Um, it's, it's uh, you know, I don't know if you follow Keith Cunningham, he would call it it's part of your thinking time, right? You know, yep. whether you do it weekly or monthly or quarterly, this could be part of your thinking time is, you know, asking a question like that. Um, you, you mentioned the, the scorecard. So I want to dig into that a little bit. And you said, what does, you know, the scorecard really tells you what does success look like? What's an example uh, of what that means? Like, let's pick a role. You can pick any role you want. And what are some things you would see on there? Of course, people can get the template towards the end of the interview. Yep. But do you have a, an example of the, uh, some things that are on there that you can speak to? Absolutely. Let me bring one up. Um, let's see here. Okay, so the first thing at the so at the top. Uh, Wait, can I can, can I can I ask you a question really quick? Yeah, so, sure. uh, I have to ask, how did you pull one up so quickly? Was did you just do a quick search, or do you have a do you have a crazy architecture system where you're like, because that was about three seconds of looking <laughs> it up, and I think for any anybody listening right now, if I asked another owner, another firm owner, hey, we, when we start talking about a random document, I said, great, can you pull it up? It would take them longer than three seconds. Right. So, yeah. so, so, so we use yeah. Google Drive uh, okay. for uh, our, um, 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 most of our uh, systems and templates. We use Asana for our project management. Um, but in Google Drive, we have so many of those templates and whatnot. So just do a quick little search. We've got you know, every team member uh, right there. So I just put in the, the top role um, that, I, that I'm looking for. And yeah, it's all, it's all there. So, so you have the naming team, convention. Yeah, we've got the naming convention and our whole team can access it uh, as well. And everybody knows that center of their role, just like the center of my role as, as a leader, I have my own scorecard um, uh, is, you know, I know to access that and every, everybody has uh, access to, the, to their own. But, cool. Got it. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, so an example of a role and what success looks like. Yep. And, and that's, that's a huge point, David, is making sure that it is accessible, right? It's like, if it's not accessible and if you don't use it, then it's like it, you're just wasting time in creating it. And this is what happens is like people come back from a seminar or something. They'll be like, oh, I'm fired up. I've got the solutions. We're going to do this. And they start to do it. And then two weeks later, they're back into the grind of the day to day and they're not using it and, and their teams. It, so it's not supporting anybody. So you have to make it accessible. And you have to use it. Right. Yeah. So, good point. It's such, it's such a great point. Um, and, the, and, and, you know, even what we found internally is so we use Google Drive as well. Um, and then, and then, you know, obviously firms could use Jetpack workflow or they could use Asana, but if they want something more client centric, they could go with Jetpack and you, whether it's drive or, or Jetpack or whatever, if the owner's not pointing back to the system, then you're training the entire team to go to you. Right. Right. Like if you're, I don't know if you use Slack, I'm assuming you guys use Slack or yeah. something like it. Right. If yeah. everybody was pinging you for this job template and you were Slack messaging back people or emailing them back people, then you're just training everybody on your team to come to you for the information yep. versus Asana versus Google drive versus whatever. Right. Yep. So yep. I think the accessibility is huge. Yeah, for sure. And uh, a part of that is uh, if you're creating job scorecards for the first time, don't create them yourself, have each team member create the first version and we can send you a training of like how the team member can, can do that. But right from the start, give the onus to, to a, a, a somebody else on your team so that they're not trained to you know come to you for solutions they own it right from the start so let me just do you mind if i share my screen uh, and just show this cool? yeah and we'll talk through it so if you're listening on the podcast we'll, we'll walk through the visual but i also highly recommend you jumping on youtube and wherever else this video is but a very bare minimum uh, youtube but we'll, we'll talk through it uh for the yeah. for the listeners as well yep so at the top there's just a couple basic things of uh you know who do they report to and whatnot uh, when do you, uh, or when did they start and what the, is the, na the name of the role? But the first two pieces are what's the vision for the role? Um, so this is a, uh, a role, uh, online marketing specialist that we're getting ready to go and hire for. So we start a job scorecard and, and the hiring manager is the vision for this role from a high level. And then what's an A player for this role? And we want to get really granular on understanding who this person is so that when we are going out and trying to hire this person, um, or evaluating how they do and evaluating how they're doing in their trial period or in their role in the day to day, uh, we can say, you know, here's where the gaps and opportunities are, or here's where they are really living this out. So again, starting with the vision, we've got to know where does this role fit in 
how does it support the overall uh, company? And from a high level, what is uh, uh, the, the particular success for the role? And then the A player defined, I'll just read this out real quick. Uh, this person absolutely loves online marketing. They are great or at organization, keeping the details together and aren't afraid to get their hands dirty. They are hungry to drive results and be a part of an awesome team. They have some experience in online marketing and with a lot of tech tools and are looking for an opportunity to be a part of a company for many years to come that is making a big impact on the world. They are smart, can pick things up, yada, yada. So anyhow, I'm defining this out in detail and it just helps humanize it so much so that when I'm sharing this role with our leadership team saying, hey, this is who I'm looking for. They're like, who do you know? They're like, oh, like that sounds like Joe. Or when we are putting a, um, um, a hiring page together, like people read it and they're like, oh my gosh, you wrote that for me. And that's what we want them to do. So starting with success from a high level uh, just helps them. It helps you uh, and helps make uh, the likelihood that you're going to hire somebody great um, just so much better. So that's more on the hiring side. The A couple other pieces I want to get into are they need to also define success. So there's this uh, second section that is filled in by them. What is success for them? And it's a really important question that very few business owners actually ask, right? Mm -hmm. You ask, hey, Susie, like so excited to have you on the team, but I've never asked you, what's the success for you? Like, where do you want to grow? Where do you want to develop? What, what do you want to achieve? Like if we look at, you know, things uh, 12 months from now, what will we say has, has been an amazing 12 months? Like just asking that is a huge thing because now you see where they want to grow and develop. You, wanna, you see what their goals and ambitions are. And your job as the leader is to figure out their vision and tie it up with the company vision and show them how that's the best path to helping them do that and help them succeed, right? So we have just a quick little section of what is success uh, for your role and where do you want to develop and grow? And this has them also thinking about that development and growth. Again, don't, nobody does this, right? So we've got high level success overall. We've got their success. And then we get into their responsibilities and it breaks down into detail. And what we want is to have a maximum of five core responsibilities. And within this, there's going to be several things that they own, but five core responsibilities. And um, uh, some people on your team, maybe just kind of a jack of all trades where they've got 20 different things going on and they're just spread too thin. Try to simplify it down to five things that they can own and do really, really well. Uh, and ideally less than that. But um, uh, so for instance, with this marketing uh, online marketing role, they're going to own um, the marketing project management. Uh, they're going to own the uh, tech setup and tech management of our um, uh, marketing initiatives. They're going to own the numbers and tracking reporting as it relates to the marketing department. And they're going to own the uh, content management in, in the interim. Uh, they aren't going to own this longer term, uh, but those uh, are, are their top four responsibilities. And again, within that, there's a couple. So we've got high level vision, we've got personal success, and then we've got the responsibilities laid out to show what they own. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, going down to that bottom section on roles and responsibilities, you know, how do you think about capacity and utilization? I see there's a column down here. It's, it's, it, there's two columns. One says frequency and the other one says estimate, estimated hours per week. Do you have an internal target? And, and the reason I'm asking this is, right, you're, you're, you are, are a fairly young company. You have a lot of ideas. I'm sure you can react to the market very quickly. So there might be new initiatives, projects. I mean, we're, we're, we're doing this interview, you know, we're a couple months into COVID, but there's still craziness going on when it comes to PVP and what's new with the SBA. And for the accounting firm owner, there's all these opportunities to do webinars or content pieces or offer different services. So mm -hmm. what, what do you feel is the appropriate amount of utilization, but then still, still allows the firm or organization to seize new opportunities that they might come up? without yeah. overburdening the, the team. Yeah, so, so one thing that we talk about uh, with the team is having a salary cap. And what that means is uh, we've got a range that um, uh, uh, of, of our revenue that we'll be committing to the team. So let's just make up some general numbers. Let's say that uh, we're typically making $100,000 per month. We may say, hey, our salary cap's between 30 and 40%. So if we start spending $40,000 uh, uh, per month uh, on our team, then that's at the, the, the max of our salary cap that we say, hey, we've got to be more efficient or start growing revenue or we can go that, right? And if we go below that, where we're only spending $30,000 or let's say $25,000, so we're below our threshold, we're like, hey, we have some extra money to invest back into our team. Um, so we use the dollar amounts uh, from a salary cap standpoint to start to make um, uh, um, uh, team decisions on, you know, uh, more team or less team or whatever. Um, 
and we do the same for time. So maybe your, your utilization rate is between 80 and 90%. Like as soon as we get to 90%, that means we have to hire. Uh, if it's 80%, that means that we have to, you know, uh, uh, look at potentially, you know, cutting people back or doing part-time or whatever. So maybe there's a range that you create. It's really just tough to, uh, to say what that right utilization rate is because it mm -hmm. depends on every business. Yeah. I, and, you know, look, we've done 150 or so interviews. This is the first time I've heard the perspective of what's our revenue and what do we find is an acceptable amount to spend on the team. Yeah. And we're only allowed to spend more on the team once we hit the next inflection point of revenue. Um, when I talked about it earlier of saying, well, how do we grow without adding to headcount? It's, it's a bit of an extension of what you just mentioned, which is, you know, putting these guardrails in your firm to say, we cannot hire until we meet this revenue target really makes you take a brutal, honest look at your firm and saying, if I keep hiring people and we're only, you know, let's say, you know, and only growing incrementally. So I'm, I'm, I'm only increasing or I'm sorry, I'm decreasing my levels of profitability. It's time to take a step back and say, are we doing the right, do we have the right team? Are they doing the right things? Am I doing the right things? Am I managing my team? Well, do we have the right systems? There is something breaking in your current structure. That's not allowing you to grow. Absolutely. And by having that, uh, range and that threshold and that decision uh, uh, criteria in place makes your job as the leader it's so much easier, right? It takes out the emotions, it takes out the day to day, and it has your business be ultimately a set of numbers, which that's what it really is. And yes, we've got humans involved, and we've got you know a lot, and we we care about those people. But from a decision making standpoint, the numbers will guide you so well. And as we were starting out uh, before this, I said, I love working with accounts because they know their numbers and we can just make some really good decisions once we get in there. So that's a system is to have that salary cap to say, hey, here's what I'm going to make. And you make that decision mm -hmm. in a time of peace uh, where it's easy to see and you know, hey, if we hit this, well, PPP has whacked our business or hey, we're exploding. We need to you know, invest into the team or whatever. It just makes the decision making uh, so much easier and so much more effective. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this has been a blast. I think there's a lot of takeaways. Um, and by the way, a lot of things you talked about, and I didn't come into this interview thinking this, but you're talking about team capacity. You're talking about throughput or turnaround time. This is all stuff you can track inside of Jetpack Workflow as well. If you're on the client side, Austin, I don't think you should ever use Jetpack Workflow, but if you're an accounting firm, probably it can help you track all this information. So if you're doing a time audit, you know, check out the tool because we could show you this and you can even budget for yourself how much admin time you want to spend. And we, you could be brutally honest being like, oh, goodness gracious, I thought it was 10 hours a week. It's really 20. Yeah. Um, Austin, you're, you're very prolific. You have a lot of content out there. We talked about the job scorecard, talked about your book. For people that want to reach out, say thank you, connect, maybe start learning about the job template, your book. What is the best place for them to go and, and, and get some resources? Yeah, uh, the, the, I want to give you a book. Uh, so uh, we are moving a lot of books right now, and I think it's going to impact a lot of business owners all across the globe. We work with a lot of accounting firms that I think that you're going to get a ton of value out of it. So we'd love to give you a free physical copy of the book. We've got hardcovers. We've got paperbacks. Uh, um, so where you can go, excuse me, is to scale2x.com slash jetpack. That's scale2x.com slash jetpack. Just put your address in there. Uh, we'll make sure that you get the job scorecard template. We'll make sure that you get a copy of the book. Um, and if you start to apply just a couple things that are in there, it's going to help simplify your business. It's going to help you gain a lot more time back and ultimately drive more profits, more growth, more of what you really want out of your business. So uh, free book, free a job scorecard, take advantage of those. And I'm very, very happy to help you uh, with that. Scaletox.com slash jetpack. Cool. And that's free, free. That's free, free. There's, there's, no, there's no shipping and handling. We are selling it uh, uh, on Amazon. We are selling it uh, in other places, but this is free, free. I'll cover the cost of the book. I'll cover the cost of the shipping. Amazing. No credit card or anything. Uh, just uh, put your address in. Yeah, honestly, if you're a firm owner and you're thinking about, you know, how do I really level up my owner mentality, my manager mentality, and you don't take advantage of this offer, then you're crazy. Like it's, it's you put in that, just put your name. I have a copy of the book right? This is why Austin got on the podcast. I picked up the book. I really like the materials. I wouldn't, he wouldn't be on here if I didn't enjoy his content. So, you know, this offer, I, I don't know when it expires once we move X number of books, or if you're listening to this in 2022, maybe send us an email before you, you take the <laughs> offer. But th this is crazy. It, it, I, I really appreciate it. This is the first time we've gotten a full free book on the show. So 
uh, check out the URL. And if you're running around, hopping around, skipping around, doing home improvement, by the way, I went to Home Depot over the weekend crazy there was a line out the door uh it was unbelievable it was like 50 60 70 80 people in the line i mean wow. home projects are going crazy so maybe that's you right now you're doing stuff with the saw i don't know you're building a shed i don't know what people do and you couldn't write down everything from today's interview and you couldn't write down or you couldn't understand you know the job scorecard or how to get more leverage out of your time we're going to do a full recap of the show notes at jetpackworkflow.com slash blog jetpackworkflow.com slash blog We'll link up the book. We'll link up the job scorecard. We're going to link up uh, a summary of everything we talked about today. And if you like this interview, please leave a review. If you loved it, if you know a fellow firm owner that could just needs to hear this information, share it with them, All right? That's the best thing you can do for this podcast to share it with another firm owner that you feel needs to hear this information. And Austin, thanks again for coming on. Absolutely. Appreciate it, David. And uh, if you have any questions, as you can reach out to me at any time, Austin at scale 2 x uh, like I said, apply just one or two things from this and you're going to uh, have some good traction, I think. Awesome. Thanks again for coming on.